check this video out with me. This guy's gonna explain that fossils are not millions of years old. Let's watch it. If you grew up like I did, taught in a state-run school system, you probably have a ready answer. Millions of years. I grew up learning the typical evolutionary story party line regarding rocks and fossils. That slow fossilization ideas were true and that fossils were millions of years old. I read books with detailed and colorful diagrams showing that fossils formed mostly when animals and or plants died in watery environments. I typically use the canned example I'd seen and heard so often. A fish, according to the typical series of pictures I'd seen depicted in a wide assortment of books, a fish would die, sink to the bottom of a lake, and get slowly covered in layers of silt and mud. As millions of years would pass, the sediment got compressed as new layers gathered. The mud would turn into rock, the fish would become permineralized, and voila, it became a fossil. If I'd just taken a few seconds to think about it, I would have easily realized that what my own eyes observed is that dead fish tend to float and bloat. And the ones that were at the bottom were chewed up by crabs and little nippers quite quickly. And even the bones didn't last all that long. I realize now that I've been taught what to think, not how to think. Most people, even Christians, still believe that it takes millions of years for rocks to form and a living organism to become a fossil. I realize now that a major reason I never doubted these ideas is that I'd never been shown an alternative for how fossils could have formed. I never heard one person in my earlier years ever mention that a giant catastrophe, especially the great deluge recorded in the Bible, could have buried creatures rapidly and completely and formed fossils very quickly. I realize that evolutionary researchers can't explain many things according to that long age paradigm, which is likely why they've more recently begun to embrace and incorporate catastrophic explanations into their evolutionary system. Like why they've found fossilized animals in the middle of very specific short-term activities and actions, like eating or giving birth. For example, at the Creation Museum in the United States, we have a fossil fish displayed that was swallowing another fish while they were buried. Another is the fossil of a horseshoe crab with its tracks visible in the sediment it was traveling along. This indicates that not only was it buried at lightning speed according to the common geological perspective, but that the right chemical conditions in the sediment for rapid fossilization to protect the specimen and its tracks must have been present, eliminating the need for any kind of deep time process to account for the fossilization process. And even more rapidly decaying soft-bodied animals like jellyfish have been found in Australia, Canada, Germany, the United States, and other countries. And this presents an incredible conundrum for evolutionary scientists because jellyfish decay so rapidly they typically leave no trace whatsoever after a very short time. Now fossils are typically embedded in rock, which means if the fossilization of an organism occurred rapidly, then the rock they are trapped in must have formed quickly as well. Most of us have been told that it takes millions of years for large portions of strata we see around the world to have formed. How would that explanation fit with the clock in the rock found in Washington, USA in 1975? So we know that rocks can form rapidly under the right conditions. When you realize this was a real event, you can understand that the flood would have swept away plants and animals, creating huge amounts of biomass and burying them in waterborne sediments. This would mean many were buried en masse, which would have created huge fossil graveyards, of which we find many around the world. The Messel Pit in Germany, fossils of birds, amphibians, reptiles, insects, fish, and mammals are found in the same place. Not only that, are so well preserved, they show color, fur, and food in their stomachs. Fossils have been made in a laboratory in 24 hours, mimicking naturally occurring fossils to a T. This news was published in a secular article from the University of Bristol called Creating Synthetic Fossils in the Lab Sheds Light on Fossilization Processes, which mentions that the experimental samples, or what they refer to as synthetic fossils, are compared to real fossils, supposedly thousands or millions of years old, and they were basically identical, not just visually but also microscopically as revealed using a scanning electron microscope. Scientists even found that just as in the naturally occurring fossils, the 24-hour fossils contain preserved microscopic pigment-bearing structures called melanosomes that reside within the organic films in feathers and lizards treated, while unstable protein and fatty tissues degrade and are lost. This experiment, accomplished using a hydraulic press, shows that under the right conditions, fossils can form very rapidly.